Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. His Royal Highness of Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Prime Minister of the Hellenic Republic, Kyriakos Mitosakis, on the sidelines of the fifth edition of the Future Investments Initiative, the FII, held in Riyadh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. His Royal Highness highlighted the steady growth of relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Hellenic Republic, noting the Kingdom's commitment to further strengthening economic cooperation and coordination in line with joint agreements and MOUs that benefit both countries regional and international issues of common interest as well as issues related to regional safety and stability were also discussed. For his part, uh, Mito Kisa expressed his gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and noted His Royal Highness's support to furthering Bahraini Greek relations. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed, and the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zaid bin Rajda Zayani, also attended. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa participated in the Middle East Green Initiative Summit held in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. The summit was hosted by the Saudi Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad highlighted Saudi Arabia's strategic role in furthering regional development and environmental protection and reaffirmed the Kingdom of Bahrain's commitment to achieving regional and global environmental security. It is a commitment strengthened over the last week by both Bahrain and Saudi Arabia's announcements of their intention to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2060. His Royal Highness welcomed the initiatives undertaken by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Bahrain and others to preserve the natural environment and combat climate change, commenting that this is a global challenge that requires a united approach to ensure a prosperous future for all. His Royal Highness emphasized the importance of knowledge sharing between countries to develop CCUS technology, reduce carbon emissions and increase energy efficiency, stating that we all have a collective responsibility to achieve climate security and secure a sustainable future. His Royal Highness also highlighted the important role of agricultural nurseries in realizing the MGI summit's afforestation's goals, committed Bahrain to supporting these efforts and commended the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's success in organizing and hosting the summit. Under the directives of the President of the National Guard, Lieutenant General Azani Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, the National Guard carried out Naval Exercise Combat 1 to counter terrorism and protect vital oil installations. The exercises were conducted today morning on the eastern coast of the Kingdom. Combat 1 is a continuation of a series of training exercises that the National Guard periodically conducts to boost its military capabilities. The exercises were conducted on a marine oil installation on the eastern coast of the Kingdom as an evaluation and testing experience for the National Guard's capabilities in the command and the control systems and their advanced plans to protect marine vital installations and secure their locations. National Guard Director of TAF and Major General Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Saud Al Khalifa stressed that they were consistent with the support provided by the Presidency of the National Guard to all security institutions in a manner that enhances security and stability throughout the Kingdom. He added that they also help preserve the nation's gain 
gains and achievements accomplished during this prosperous rule of His Highness King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Sheikh Abdul Aziz praised the efforts made by the commanders of the exercises and the participants from the National Guard units and commended their high professionalism. This confirms the constant readiness of the National Guard staff to answer the call of duty in various circumstances. The exercise outcomes reflected the continuous development in the modern training arrangements of the National Guard that are enabling them to perform their national duties with high standards of efficiency and competence. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, Hana Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, has hailed the successful one of Cordoba CF under the Bahraini leadership after putting together a 12 match unbeaten streak, which is the longest in the club's history, stating that it reflects the support provided to the team from the management and a sign of the players' great efforts. Hana Sheikh Nasser pointed out that completing 12 matches with suffering a single defeat in the Spanish competitions fuels the players desire to continue accomplishing positive results in the coming period, especially that the team is on the cups of an important period in all contests that requires everyone involved to double their efforts. The Zahana Sheikh Nasser wished the team the best of luck in its coming matches. It's worth noting that Cordoba has managed to break its previous unbeaten record of seven games, which was achieved in the 1999 and 98 season by going 12 games without any defeat. The Council of Representatives held its weekly meeting chaired by its speaker, Fauzi Zainal. The Council approved a draft law amending a number of provisions of the Memorandum of Association and Articles of Association of Gulf Petrochemical Industries Company established upon decree by Law 18 of 1979. The Council also approved a number of proposals on supporting government employees who are studying at their own expense in universities and exempting widows, orphans and those sponsored by the Royal Humanitarian Foundation from government fees. The Representatives Council announced plans to launch the Digital Parliament project, which is the first of its kind in the region. The project, which is set to launch early next year, comes in line with the Royal Directives towards digital transformation in support of the comprehensive development process in the Kingdom of Bahrain. And to speak more about this, we are joined on the phone by the Director of Information Technology at the Council of Representatives, Mr. Jassim al -Gannas. Hello, Mr. Jassim. It's good to have you here with us tonight. Can you tell us more about the plan to launch the Digital Parliament project and its stages of development. Yes, hi. <clears throat> First, I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to go over the new Digital Parliamentary project developed by the Council of Representatives recently. Based on the announcement by Our Excellency Mr. Fawzi bin Abdullah Zainal, the Speaker of the Council of Representatives, and under the supervision and follow-up of Our Excellency towards digitizing the parliamentary work, and the kind support of His Excellency Advisor Rashid bin Mohammed Bunajma, the General Secretary of the Council of Representatives. We took the initiative to form the base and platform that will enable the Parliament to digitalize and improve the work of the Parliament. And the Digital Parliamentary Project comes under this umbrella, which is the first of its kind that will be launched in the region. The plan of this project is to launch the Digital Parliamentary Services project on different stages and phases. As any new project, we have gone through several stages as requirements gathering through meetings with the concerned directorate, the system design, development stages, testing, and finally training the MP as well as the end user. And this is how we plan for the launch of the Digital Parliament system. Thanks. And how will this project further develop the work of the Council of Representatives? Well, the aim of this project is uh, to achieve the continuity and sustainability of the parliamentary work in line with the action plan and strategy set by the uh, Secretary General, all of which resulted in the investment and employment of modern technologies and the achievements of advanced stages in the field of digital transformation of parliamentary work. Uh, this project uh, will minimize time, effort of internal processes and costs, 
one of the key features of the system is that there will be no more paper documents that will be used in the parliamentary services and processes. We will have a totally paperless environment. Besides that, all the processes will be automated and archived for future references. Uh, the, the, the benefits uh, for implementing digital parliament projects uh, it, it will act uh, as a platform for the MPs that will enable them to get the number of services electronically 24-7, available for them to access, such as uh, apply their proposal of law, apply their proposal and the parliamentary question, withdraw uh, all of the above, and other related services. In addition, it will provide the MPs with an easy interface uh, for follow-up and action that might be necessary, such as gathering signatures and some predefined processes. Ability of handling the defined parliamentary service from its initial stages. The system is containing all of the actions and responses taken by the Council's General Secretary and acts as a log database for the MP's future references. Mm -hmm. The system can be used through smart devices such as iPads, smartphones, PCs, and is able to notify the requesters through emails and SMS. More parliamentary tools and services will be added in the upcoming phases to further increase the productivity of the MPs to assist them in their responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, one, the, the first phase of the project uh, will be launched next January, where the parliamentary will, act, uh, will activate the parliamentary tools such as uh, apply their proposal of law, mm -hmm. uh, raise apply their proposals, and the parliamentary questions. While the second phase of the project will launch consisting of the reminder of the constitutional, legislative, and oversight tools such as law drafting, investigation requests, interrogation requests. Mm -hmm. And this is how the tools uh, will have uh, a deep impact and help in further to develop the work of the Council of Representatives. Mm -hmm. That's great to hear. We wish you all the best of luck. And that was the Director of Information Technology at the Council of Representatives, Mr. Jasm al -Gannas. Thank you for joining us. Labor and Social Development Minister and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Labor Market Regularity Authority, the LMRA, Jamil Ahmedan, headed the Bahraini delegation in the sixth ministerial consultation meeting of Asia Labor Sending and Receiving Countries Abu Dhabi Dialogue ATD held in Dubai from until the 28th of October. The current session agenda includes discussing monitoring expected changes in labor markets and economic developments and their potential impact on the rates of supply and demand for qualified workers workforce at the national, regional and international levels. The meeting discussed the change in work patterns due to technological development and the extent of its impact on future professions as well as addressing future job opportunities for women in light of the growing demand for jobs in the health, social care and education sector. The participants will review ways to develop relations between the participating countries and coordinate among them at the international level on issues related to global work regulations and legislation in a way that contributes to strengthening the protection of the workforce rights to ensure the stability of relations. Attorney General Dr. Ali bin Fadl al patronized the International Workshop on the Prospects and Challenges of Effective Application of the Restorative Justice Law for All Children in cooperation with the Judicial and Legal Studies Institute and the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime and with the participation of the British and French embassies in Bahrain. The two-day event was launched with the participation of more than 200 specialists from different countries and in the presence of the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa, ambassadors and diplomats, judges, members of the public prosecution and experts and international experts took part in the workshop. In this opening speech, Dr. Al Bainin affirmed the public prosecution's intention to implement effectively the restorative justice law for children and their protection from ill treatment, which is an exemplary which is an exemplary legislation with an enlightened humanitarian dimension in the criminal treatment and protection of children. He noted that 
that this is because it includes procedural and objective provisions that stipulate that no judgment or order shall be issued or actioned by taken against the children unless they are based on a thorough study of their social and psychological conditions as well as ensuring that top priority shall always be given to the best interests of the child. Dr. Bainin stressed that the ultimate goal of the law on restorative justice for children is to give priority to preserving the best interests of the child. He noted that the workshop will not only provide details of the law's objectives and procedural aspects, but also focus on its application based on its civilizational and human dimensions in line with the approach of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on developing legislation in the kingdom to ensure their progress in achieving the comprehensive development process. Today, members of the public prosecution participated in a regional workshop that sheds light on the recently issued restorative justice law of children, as the Kingdom of Bahrain has taken the lead on supporting the needs of children. Actually, this workshop, with the participation of local and international expertise from various relevant authorities, is part of a series of ongoing training courses that the public prosecution is keen to organize and offer to get enough knowledge of what is new in the legal arena. In the glorious reign of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, Bahrain played an important role in ensuring the rights for children as stipulated by the Constitution. The restorative justice law for children and their protection from maltreatment represent a milestone to the modern criminal legislation by giving priority to the rights of children. This law gave children guarantees to protect their rights and protect them from abuse and maltreatment in accordance with the Constitution and international human rights standards. This law has well defined maltreatment as any act or omission which may result a direct or indirect harm to children that could result in physical, psychological, or sexual abuse. The Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women, the SCW, Halal Ansari, participated in the Saudi Family Forum organized by the Saudi Family Affairs Council. Al Ansari affirmed that family stability and bonding is the priority of the National Plan for the Advancement of Bahraini Women, highlighting the Bahraini experience in this context, which is directed by the SCW, led by Her Royal Highness, the consort of His Majesty the King, Princess Sabika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa. She stated that the work plans and initiatives for this project were designed in a comprehensive and scientific manner that relies on the creation of national indicators and international comparisons as well as interconnected relationships between the impact of family stability on societal security and the increased participation of women in public life and the national economy. Lansari highlighted the approach of the Saudi government in supporting women's participation in developmental growth. She added that the health, economic and social impact of the pandemic requires urgent reviews and treatments according to the report of the Economic and Social Council of the UN General Assembly. Al Ansari emphasized that experiences proved the necessity and importance of proactive and forward looking planning for the needs of modern families. The Secretary General of the Higher Education Council and Vice Chairperson of the Board of Trustees of Higher Education, Sheikha Dr. Rana bint Isa bint Aija Al Khalifa, met the Minister for Higher Education, Research and Innovation, Dr. Rahma bint Ibrahim Al Mahroki, during her visit to Oman. The Minister stressed her keenness to extend cooperation with the Higher Educational Council in the Kingdom. The Secretary General stressed that her visit reflects the strength and well established relations between the two countries and the continuation of joint work for all that serves the interests of the two countries. She stressed the importance of exchanging scientific and research experiences between higher educational institutions. Sheikh Rana and the accompanying delegation were briefed on Oman's experience in the system of the Unified Admission Center and its role and mechanism of work in accepting students in various higher education institutions. For his part, the Omani Unified Admission Center Director General Dr. Hamad bin Khalfan in Omani expressed appreciation to the Secretary General for her keenness on cooperation and for her efforts in developing higher education institutions in Bahrain.
The National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus announced that following approval by the Vaccination Committee, all children aged 3 to 11 will be eligible to receive two doses of the Sinopharm vaccine starting tomorrow. The task force noted that the decision was taken following a thorough review of all medical health and safety recommendations conducted by the Vaccination Committee. Additionally, the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine will soon be approved for children aged 5 to 11 who will be eligible to receive two doses. The task Task Force stressed that it is important that eligible children get vaccinated to protect themselves, their families and public health. The Task Force noted that registration requires the consent of a legal guardian. The children must also have an adult accompanying them when receiving their vaccination. The University of Bahrain held the second international conference on data analytics for economy and industry under the theme Road to Sustainable Economy. The two-day virtual conference focused on the Sustainable Development Goals and the UOB's strategic plan, which stems from Bahrain's vision to build a knowledge-based economy. To speak more about this, we are joined on the phone by the Assistant Professor at the University of Bahrain and Coordinator of the MSc in Big Data Science and Analytics, Dr. Sousan Halal. Hello, Dr. Sousan and it's good to have you here with us tonight. Can you tell us about the main topics of the conference and how it contributes to achieving the Sustainable Development Goals? Yes, thank you for having me. Well, indeed, the conference covers a wide spectrum of topics in relation with data analytics. And data analytics in its own as a promising way to build the future of economy since nowadays countries around the world looking at fostering what we refer to as data-driven economy. So making decisions, taking actions, all will be based on data. And to move from data to these decisions and take or taking these actions based on the data, we have to develop the data analytics. And that's the main goal behind the conference. To see the broad area that the conference covers, it might be sufficient just to say that the conference has found 26 different tracks and it would be difficult to mention all of them. So just to mention example, data science applications cover data mining, data visualization, big data, financial analytics, business intelligence, bioinformatics, and many, many more. Regarding the second part, or with the achievement made by the conference towards achieving the sustainable development goals, probably the best way to answer this is through some examples. So we would say the conference enhanced the quality of education. And in what sense? Because the conference provides the students, postgraduate students specifically, with a rich environment to publish their research work, to have thorough discussion with researchers from different backgrounds, not only from academia, but also from industry, practitioners. So it's really interesting to see that the contribution made by postgraduate students um, uh, represented by 57 papers out of 135 papers submitted to the conference. And it's amazing to see that the majority of these papers indeed submitted by you or people to graduate students. Mm -hmm. Moreover, the conference establishes international partnership because the organization of the conference is not only by UOP, but UOP with well-known international institutions as partners. For example, Liverpool John Morris University, Informs Bahrain International Group, Schema, AI Institute, and with technical support from IEEE Bahrain sector. Moreover, besides all that, the conference also attracts all around the world or researchers from, let's say, different countries. We cover like 34 countries around the world. And as I mentioned, not all of them are from UOP or Bahrain itself, but also outside Bahrain, and some of them even from the industry. Mm -hmm. All these people, yeah, look for innovative ways to solve real world problems related with the economy, different sectors in our life. So all support economic growth, industrial innovations, and all these will definitely um, achieve or uh, towards achieving the sustainable development goals at the end. So uh, in summary, the, the conference itself uh, is behind it uh, a great effort spot from all parties, from university leadership, Her Excellency the President, represented deans, the team outside the university also uh, worked for like one year in order to establish that conference with international parties.
That is really amazing to hear. We wish you the best of luck. And that was the assistant professor at the University of Bahrain and coordinator of the Masters in Big Data Science and Analytics, Dr. Sousan Halal. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,173,571 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,138,329 had taken the second, and 434,561 had taken the booster dose. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. And the Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 633 with 63 recoveries and 37 registered new cases. Eight of the new registered cases are expatriates, 24 are contacts of active cases and five are travel related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.